make you strong. Let's talk about creating graphic novels with Google Slides. So this is an example of a graphic novel that I created using a template that I developed in Google Slides. What we're going to do today is go over all the things you really need to know in terms of creating a graphic novel. And then we're also going to go over how you're going to use the template that I'm providing. And the link to that template is in the description below to create your very own graphic novel. What are the things we need to know? Let's start with panels, gutters, and bubbles. So panels, gutters, and bubbles. So you notice here, this is a panel. A graphic novel is made up of a series of panels. A panel is an individual frame or single drawing in the multiple panel sequence of a comic strip or comic book. A panel consists of a single drawing depicting a frozen moment. When multiple panels are present, they are often, though not always, separated by a short amount of space called a gutter. And here you can see this is the gutter. They also have something called bubbles or speech balloons, uh, dialogue balloons or word balloons. They're called many different things and this is a common graphic convention very often used in comic books, comics, graphic novels, cartoons to allow words and in some cases pictures to be understood as presenting the speech or thoughts of a given character in the comic. This right here is word art. How you can do this in Google Slides, you would go to insert and then select word art. And word art is a great tool because it allows you to customize your text with fill and stroke, changing the stroke thickness and style. In the template, there are some features that are set up as word art and to edit them, you just double click to edit the text. Select the text to change the fill or stroke and then select a word art element and click the format options and this is where you can add things like drop shadow to your text and that's how I create the drop cap. A drop cap is a large capital letter used as a decorative element at the beginning of a paragraph or section. In this template it is set up as a word art which I just went over. So how do we edit word art? All you need to do is double click on it and that's how you would change the letter you can also click on it and go into format options where you can add a chop shadow, you can add reflection, clicking on this little carrot allows you to change some of the specificity. You can um, change the font being used, you can change the fill and the stroke. So this is all customizable and this is using the word art feature to create a drop cap. Now let's talk about text bubbles. There are many different types of text bubbles or callouts that you can add. And different types of text bubbles can mean different things to your viewer. So you can add and edit text bubbles. And I've also provided some pre-made ones in the add-on section of the template, which I will show you. But let's go over how we actually edit a text bubble. So you can see here, this is my text bubble. Um, and then all you need to do is click on it and to edit the text. But if I wanted to add my own text bubble, again, there's many ways that you can do it. But one of the easiest ways to do that is to go under shape and to go call outs. And here you can see you have many different types of call outs. I can add my own. So say I wanted to add my own right here. You notice I have different specifications I can do. I can rotate it. I can change the size. I can also change sort of the position and the length of the um, triangle at the very end. I can change the color of the speech bubble. I can change the fill color. I can change the stroke color. I can even change the thickness and the style. I can double click to put text in the box, which I then can also change the size and shape of. And if you don't like the way the text is here, you can always add your own text box on top of it. So like most things in technology, there's always more than one way to do anything. Let's talk about font choices. So let's talk about Google Fonts. You have a preset of certain font that you can use, but you can actually find additional fonts to use in your project. So how do you find additional Google Fonts? So how would you do this? You can select one or more of the text boxes uh, whose font you want to change, click on the toolbar, click the font drop down, click more fonts, and here you can search for fonts. The fonts that I like to use for graphic novels are Bubblegum Sans Serif for text, Bangers for titles and drop caps. 
And let me show you what it looks like to search for additional Google fonts. If this is my Google Slides, all I need to do is I need to make sure that either I have a text box selected or I create my own text box and then I'll see I have a little drop down for font. And all I need to do is go into more font. I can see all the fonts that I have available and you can see I've added quite a few, the most recent used fonts and then find additional Google fonts. I click more fonts and from here, I can search for specific fonts if I know the name. I can see what fonts I currently have under my fonts. I can actually use the drop down to select specific types of fonts. Um, handwritten, if I want to select specific handwritten fonts. Uh, mono serif, serif, sans serif, insert by popularity, alphabetical date added trending. So it's worth it to go in here and take a look at what's available. Now let's talk about images. When you're doing a project, it's always a good idea to be looking for images that are available to reuse. Google search has a lot of features that can help you search for images. One is once you go to the Google search, you can select images, which is the second tab right here. And here you have different um, selectors. So you can go into size and you can pick what size you're looking for large, medium, icon, etc. Um, you can use color to decide in terms of are you looking for a full color image, black and white, an image that has transparency, and then usage rights is re really important. So is this photograph or image licensed for reuse? And I recommend that you use images that are licensed for reuse. So the Google image search tool is really handy. Find images that are the right size, that are licensed to reuse, and then you can download them and edit them and add them to your project. So talking about adding images to your project, let's go over how to replace an image, crop it, add a border or stroke, and change the layer order. All right, let's talk about inserting and cropping, replacing images, and all that jazz. So let's start with replacing an image. In order to replace an image, I select the image that I would like to replace, I would go under this option to replace image and then I can decide, do I want to upload it, search the web, if it, is it in my drive? I'm going to show you how I'm doing it, uploading it from my computer. So I've downloaded images that so I'm I've going to be using images. and these images are actually from the site Unsplash, which is all free to use images. So this is my image and it, so here's my image. It's replaced the image right there and it crops it to the same size of that image. Um, if I double click on it, then I can see I can move it around within the crop. I can also drag to change the crop and I can just press return to get back to the normal editing. I can also change the order of an image and I can move it forward or backwards. One easy way to do that is to right click or command click and go into order and here is where I can move it forward, move it backward, move it to the back if I want to change the order of my images. In my template, I am using these as placeholder boxes that you're going to replace with your own image and it will be the exact dimension to fit the panel. Other options that you have is with an image selected, you can add a border to your image, change the border weight, change the border style, and change the border color. There are different templates of different layer options for this graphic novel template. You might choose to create a whole series of pages or a single page to download. You can also print your pages if you would like to draw on them. So you can use this digitally or you can use this as something you're gonna print out and draw on. To export the whole document as a PDF, you would just go to File, Download, and select PDF. If you wanted to just have one page, you could download it as a JPEG or PNG image and it will export the current slide as an image file. Let's talk about using the template that I've created. So here is the graphic novel template that I'm providing for you in the link in the description box. You have the option to create a new slide layout and you can see here are some pre-made slide layouts. These do not have the replacer box like this right here that allows you to re easily replace an image, uploading it from your computer in the same exact dimensions as the box itself. So in these pages, I've created a really easy way for you to be putting images into the different uh, panels. But if you wanted just blank panels, this is also an option. So as I mentioned, these templates are created for your ease of use. 
you have three options. You can use the plus button to create blank layouts that if you would like to use. You also have the option of having some pre-made ones that you can replace the image. So let's take a real dive through of what that looks like. So as I said before, you have four different layout options. And within this layout options, I've pre-made some of these options to have these replaceable images for you to use. And you also have one you can create your own layout. Um, so lots of different stuff that you can use. For the template, I've also added a side part right here called add-ons that will not show up in your graphic novel. These add-ons are basic elements for you to use in your graphic novel. So you can change color, fonts, and anything else you really want. And it makes it much easier for you to be creating your graphic novel. So your first step, of course, would be um, sort of figuring out what you want to do. You can replace their images, like I mentioned before. Click replace. I'm just going to upload an image here. And then once you're ready to start adding thought bubbles and callouts, these are all editable for you. And I can be dragging them onto my artboard and I can start editing. This makes it super easy for you to go along and create your graphic novel. What I've also provided for you is and the ability to create your own layout with different panels. And also you can always at any point add one of these pre-made layout templates. So graphic novels are really fun. Whether you're using it in your classroom or you just want to create your own graphic novel, I've provided you with an easy to use template. Use the link in the description below and try it out. As always, I hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe for more and add a comment below if you have a request for a specific tutorial.